you notice that the band gap has been raised from the bulk value of 0.37 eV to roughly 0.6 eV. So here's the gap of roughly 0.6 eV. That is due to quantization of the indium arsenide. Okay, you take indium arsenide, make a quantum well, you raise, you create particles in a box, you raise the gap. So the band gap got bigger from 0.4 to 0.6 ballpark. And that is automatically included in the tight binding model. It's not, we stick that in. Right? It, it comes out of the tight binding model. Now, shown here in red now, you can see that the band gap is quote unquote narrow at certain energies at certain biases. Okay. So at certain energies and certain biases, you have a broad range over which you can conduct possibly. And again, here for a different bias. Indeed, what was, is really shown here is the uh, transmission coefficient that is being opened up as a function of gate voltage. And then you can convert this by integrating charge and cur uh, the, the momentum and energy into a curve that gives you a current versus voltage. And that gives you sort of the rough behavior of a uh, band-to-band -band tunneling device that for one bias direction you're really tunneling heavily out of the valence band states in the emitter in, in the other bias direction, you really connect very well to the top of the conduction band in the collective on the right. Okay? And now you can also energy resolve in more detail these transmission coefficients. And when you're heavily connected to the valence band edge in the other bias direction that is shown now, here you see strong modulations and effects on these transmission coefficients. So there's multiple bands interacting versus at the other bias direction, you're just coming into the conduction band and you're high in the valence bands and you don't have a lot of interference effects. So now the question is, can you sort of predict what, what might be the best configuration you might want to have in a device? So this is a single gate, ultra thin body, gate 20 nanometers, uh, height 6 nanometer quantum well with a reasonable doping and a thin oxide of 1 nanometer. You can compare that to a double gate device where you have a gate on top and the bottom and you can compare that to a nanowire device where you have a so-called gate all around. So here you have in a single gate, one gate on top, double gate, you have two gates, but still an infinite device in the plane. It's a very thin device, an infinite in the plane. And you have a nanowire where you have the gate all the way around. And you can compare what the characteristics of these three devices would be. So here shown in blue is a single gate device, in green the double gate device, and in red the gate all around device. And you can see that the gate all around device has the best subthreshold swing. It has, it's, has gone uh, to 28 millivolt, volt, millivolt per decade. That's significantly lower than the MOSFET limit of 60. On the other hand, the single gate band to band device exhibits a subthreshold swing of 130. That is worse than the MOSFET case. And that is related to the details of the band edge profile that you experience in these devices. In a gate all around, you have very good potential control inside of the, the wire. So you really see that the bands are flat inside of the wire. Versus in a single gate device on the other extreme, the bands are not really flat, they're strongly angled. That means you can't quite shut off this device just as well as you can the nanowire device. And you can really assemble the subthreshold swing into two parts where you look at not only the 
the differential of the current versus gate voltage, but you look at the differential of the current versus the potential in the wire, and then the differential of the potential in the wire versus the gate voltage. And the yellow term here, this di, d, d phi s, is a vari variation of the current by an electrostatic change. And the d phi s dvg is a variation of the electrostatic potential by the gate voltage. So the point is that if you plot this variation of the central potential versus gate, uh, versus gate voltage, that in the ultra thin body devices, they're not, uh, they're, they're less than one, and they're not uh, reaching one, versus the nanowire roughly reaches one. That means the nanowire is really right now looking like the better candidate for a band-to-band -band tunneling transistor. And you need to control your voltages and your gates even more closely than a MOSFET, which is a challenge, because controlling that in a MOSFET alone is already very hard. Okay, So just saying, I'm going to have a band-to-band -band tunneling device, I'm going to have a better sub-threshold swing, isn't quite cutting it. You're going to have to control the gates and the potentials very closely. 